All right, well, welcome back to 88.7 FM, The Edge. You're listening to the Hawk Talk. My name is Connor McPhail, your host. And today we have our guest, Jackson Vertucci, a member of the men's basketball team. Jackson, if you'd like to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, hey, everybody. Uh, Jackson Vertucci, um, senior men's basketball um, from New York City, uh, major in business analytics and uh, business management. So I'm doubling up there, and uh, I think I think that's all about me. Nice, man. So just to get into it a little bit, how have you been? How's your year going so far? How's this weird new, uh, I guess, learning style semester going for you? Yeah, you know, it's been an adjustment. Um, I think I've, I've done a pretty good job adapting to the environment. Uh, all my classes are online. Um, you know, obviously with the whole sports situation, too, it's been a little bit of an adjustment, but um, yeah. I'm just, I'm just keep keeping going. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about what it could have been or what it could be kind of just taking it for what it is and, uh, moving forward. Gotcha. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that, not just to jump into, I guess, the, the hard hitting questions, but I know recently the SUNYAC announced the cancellation of your season. Sadly, Even, shortly after they released like the eight game schedule, how are you, how have you been handling that? If you want to tell us how you've been feeling and stuff. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's crazy, right? You know, they released the schedule, yeah. and I think everyone on our team and, and other teams around the conference would agree that we kind of had a sense of hope. Uh, to me, it felt kind of like they were saying, you know, we're going to do our best to do this, and the only thing stopping us w- would be another uh, – a second wave or something like that, you know, a second wave yeah. of coronavirus. So, yeah, we kind of all had hope. And then for a week later, for it to kind of just be gone like that, um, was was, it's still we we still don't completely understand why they chose to conduct conduct it in that way. Yeah, I mean it's super unfortunate. Who who were your? I mean, there was only I know a couple other Suniac schools that you guys play were shut down, so the eight game schedule was only consisted of four teams. You played twice, right? Uh, yes. Who, do you know, who were the – it was – Yes, we had uh, Oneana, Potsdam, Plattsburgh, um, and I believe Cortland. And so yeah. what they kind of did is split it east-west. Um, so that's why um, it was made that way. So Potsdam, Plattsburgh, even though they're all the way up north, they're still on the uh, eastern side of the state. So they were kind of going to be in our little – um, conference within the conference so yeah I mean, it's super unfortunate um, you know you work so hard and I wanted to dive into this as well um, just how your teammates are handling it and stuff and like I know you I don't know I was looking at this and it looks like you're listed as a senior or you're listed as a junior because you have actually you have eligibility I don't know if you're looking mm-hmm. to come back but as the team, how, how is there, what was the response? Because I know you guys always are looking to compete every year and you guys are just getting into practices and stuff. But. Yeah, it, it, it was – that was also kind of crazy because, you know, it was a casual Monday afternoon and one of our teammates sent uh, something from Twitter into the group chat. It was some random basketball source on Twitter was reporting that the SUNYAC was canceling their season. Um, and this was at like, I got to say 11, 1130 AM. And yeah. we were all kind of like, okay, like no one has said anything yet. Like, let's, let's not just jump to conclusions about, uh, if this is true or not. And then, you know, what do you know, like 25 minutes later, uh, our coach says like, you know, emergency zoom meeting. And then after that, we kind of all were just like, damn, like, <laughs> I guess it is true. Yeah. Um, and, and that's another thing kind of with the way they kind of handled it you know we found out from twitter um yeah. we didn't even find out i mean you feel you feel i feel like a, a professional team here finding out things from twitter as opposed to our coaches or the athletic department so yeah i mean I, in a way we can our team can relate a little bit being i mean we haven't had heard any news about our season knock on wood but last season when our season got like in the middle of it got cut short you know it's just it's almost demoralizing it's like damn it just just like that you're just gonna stop it just just Mm -hmm. in the middle especially like that when you guys are just getting into it you're getting excited about the eight game schedule 
So I'm, I'm super sorry about that. I mean, it's got to got to stink. Hope hope everyone on the team's doing well. But yeah, just to maybe get on a little brighter note, I know you guys were pretty optimistic about the season. What were your expectations? Like, you know, maybe if you expectations for this year, maybe next year. I don't know what your plans are, but yeah. So I mean, for me personally, um, I have. I you're right. I do have an extra year of eligibility. Um, and technically now too, assuming yeah. everything still goes the way it does. Yeah. Um, my future plans um, were to do a fifth year at the school here. Um, I won't lie. Um, everything's kind of up in the air right now uh, in terms of my future here, which, you know, is, is with most things though in my life. Um, still haven't really made that decision yet. Um, and then I guess – for our team, you know, obviously we struggled a lot last year. Uh, blame it on what you want. Um, but I, I just just working out with some of the new guys coming in, some of the freshmen, some of the transfers. Um, very impressive, very impressive talent, very impressive skill, high basketball IQ. Um, I think the program is in good hands moving forward. Um, I was hoping to maybe kind of get that started this year. Um, but it'll have to wait. Yeah, so, I mean, I know you guys always, you know, you, you, your team does a great job of recruiting and bringing good guys, and I know you guys have expectations, and I guess you just need to find that right group of guys to connect and really get the rhythm going, on top of the CUNYAC being a very tough conference for basketball, just like any other sport. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, so, you think you're coming back next year? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what the, the future holds. Uh, yeah, exactly. I wish I could give you a definitive answer. Um, but right now, um, the options I got are are um, still being weighed. Gotcha. But for now, now that you've heard this news, are you guys still able to, like, play at all, practice, you know, get some reps at least? Yeah, right now we're going three times a week uh, at night in the Hawk Center. Um, yeah which is fun. It's just fun to get in there. Uh, we're hoping to get that expanded. Um, we're one of the teams on campus who uh, we want more of the practice. I know that's kind of been a debate recently for, for some other teams, but we're definitely one of those that we, we enjoy getting in that gym and, and we we're, we're hoping to get more time in the near future. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even for, for us and I'm sure all the teams like the, the fall teams, they're still practicing and it's just nice to, to play. You know, you get you, you're in quarantine for a couple months, and then you know, you, it's just nice to be, be with your be with your teammates and get some reps. But even with the unfortunate news, but to go into another topic, and I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. But I know you're a, a member of SAC, and you're pretty um, active in it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to talk about that, how you got into it, I know you're the. I want to say this correctly. You're the board or the chair, the chair member of diversity and inclusion. If you want to talk about how that's going how you got into it Mm -hmm. yeah so I'm on the SAC e-board I had the diversity and inclusion subcommittee um I kind of got into it I was a general member last year in that subcommittee um and then this year I kind of took over uh leading it um and I love it and I love the work that we're doing this year um we have the interview series going um if uh, anybody saw with, with Carly Croto uh, interviewing a SUNY Pulse alumni, we're hoping to have a few more of those interviews put together and posted before the end of the semester. Um, we're actually also in the process of getting a guideline uh, or sort of like a procedure, if you may, thrown into the student athlete handbook that'll make it easier for student athlete team pages, the, the actual you know, like the SUNY New Paltz men's volleyball team page or the men's basketball team page. Um, yeah. we're, in, we're, we're right now working on getting a process put into the athlete handbook that'll make it easier for you guys to post uh, human rights support, um, staying away from political statements, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. But if things work out, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully you guys will have an easier platform um, where you could uh, – uh, post post your support for uh, human rights movements and, and things of that nature. That's awesome. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I see the stuff you guys are doing. I saw the interview with 
Carly and Sebastian. But to go, I know you're big involved in it now, but maybe for the people that want to get involved in some younger student athletes, how did you get started in this whole thing? In a, in a SAC? Yes. Sorry. Yep, yep no problem. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know, obviously when the time comes around to fill out the application, you know, get on it. And, and, I, and I only say that because it, it always seems like a side thing to do. And then mm-hmm. you never – I know a lot of people that were really interested and then they just literally never filled out the application. Yeah. You know, if, if you're really interested in doing it, you know, go, go ahead and apply and, and get into it because, you know, the stuff that we have the power to do as student athletes, you're not going to get it in, in most other places on campus. Um, you know, the, the, the committee is run by us. It only consists of student athletes. There, there's no one else there. Um, so if you want to kind of do stuff off the field or off the court or, and whatnot, uh, it, it's one of the best places to go to, to put real change into action. And I think, you know, you're seeing that this year. Um, we're a very active SAC this year, um, and, and we're getting a lot done. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's nice to know that you're impacting your community in more ways than, than just your sport. Hundred percent, and I, I I've noticed that you guys are posting a lot. I know, like uh, Olivia D'Antoni and the women's volleyball team is I think posted something recently about it, and it just it's, it's really awesome to see about that. But to go into how I know we just talked about how you got involved and how other people can get involved, but how has how do you think this has impacted you a little bit more? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know I I kind of going into this year I I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do SAC and I, I was going to be a leader in it, that um, I was going to hold myself accountable to um, make actual change happen. And that was kind of my challenge to myself. You know, it'd be easy to kind of go in there and, and you know, make a, few, a nice few big statements, use some big words, and, and that's all nice and good. But um, I think challenging myself to get tangible stuff out there to help our community um, it's been pretty fulfilling for me, and it's kind of helped me get through some of these more down or, or tougher times, you know, just focusing my energy to doing stuff like that. So it's been a good outlet um, in, in that sense. That's awesome. But um, to go into it a little bit more, I recently – you did an interview last year on your SAC involvement and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll read the quote out a little bit that you said because I – I personally love that you said diversity and inclusion is not just a relevant topic on our campus, but around the world. I've learned a lot about diversity and inclusion specifically at the pulse. And I use the knowledge when observing the world around me. Why do certain people have this perspective? How can I make it known to this person? I accept them for who they are. These are questions I ask myself every day in hopes to improve new pulse and maybe one day our world as a whole. And while reading that, I mean, that's just a very empowering statement. I mean, how did you come to get in this state of mind and like just wanting to help people so much? Uh, yeah. So it actually stems from basketball. I, um, I was a part of a program when I was younger and I, I, I'm still a part of it now called steady buckets in, in Manhattan, in New York city. And the founder, Mackie Bergman, whenever you first go, the first lesson that he teaches you is, is to accept people for who they are. You know, you're there to play basketball. You're not there to do anything else. You're not there to judge people or anything like that. And I guess to put more context to it, the program itself right now is a a seven-day-a-week free program. Um, And how is that relevant? Well, since the program is free, there's no socioeconomic or – you know, there, there's no economic uh, restrictions. You know, people who don't have money show up. People who have a lot of money show up. People from different neighborhoods, from different parts of New York City show up. And because it's free. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is these, these sports camps that cost a lot of money, there's kids that can't afford it that get left out. And you end up playing with the same type of person. but I was kind of from a very young age put into an environment with a lot of different types of people. And so I learned, I, I was learning diversity and inclusions 
probably since I was in second or third grade and I had no idea um, because the, the people that I played basketball with every single day were nothing like me and, and were a lot different from me in many different ways. Um, and so some of those guys even today are one of my, some of my best friends and that's how I became best friends with them because I had to tell myself maybe when I was younger, I didn't understand the way they thought or the way they did things, you know, those questions, like how, how can I make it known that, you know, I want to be a part of this with them and, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's awesome that you're so involved in the community and also in that article, I read, I mean, like you, I know the Newports community over the, not this summer, but the summers before they host a, a sports camp for these kids to do stuff. And I know you're involved in some of that and stuff. I mean, like, do you have any tips, tricks for people to, who that want to get involved in the community a little bit more, maybe in the Newports area or, or in the city besides uh, yeah. the one that you just mentioned, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess my biggest piece of advice is like when you, when you, when you want to, connect with people who you maybe don't know is, is you got you got to be willing to listen you got to be willing to learn um because e even if you think like I, I often think maybe I know everything and then I meet someone new and I'm like well I never thought about something like that before and the willingness to listen the willingness to learn from what other people have to say um that that that'll help you build the relationships that you want to build and that's how you get people to trust you and respect you and once you have the trust and respect of the people around you, it's a lot easier to get them on board with, you know, something like SAC or um, something like a community service project, because, you know, you have to, you have to prove yourself. You have to prove you're actually there to help people. Um, I think that's a crucial step. A lot of people forget is that, you know, sometimes the hardest part is just getting people on board. And then once you do that, the, the rest kind of fo follows suit. Yeah, man. I mean, that's awesome. I, that, 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 I mean, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. I, the input is great. And anybody out there listening, please try and take action because I know it's always a fulfilling action to do that for yourself. And, and I know other people like that really appreciate it. But mm -hmm. for right now, we're going to take a quick break. But more Hawk Talk next on 88.7 FM The Edge. All right, welcome back to 88.7 FM The Edge. You're listening to the Hawk Talk. Uh, we're back here with Jackson. And Jackson, I just wanted to go, I know you just mentioned about growing up in, um, in, the, in the city and getting involved in this stuff, but I know growing up in the city, basketball culture is huge. What was it like growing up in like a city, in the city, especially going to a high school that's super competitive that I, I, I know it, the one you was, the, was the one you went to? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just you saying it. it it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, it's unreal. Um, like I would have games Tuesday, Friday, every Tuesday, Friday, and every single one would be packed. And I mean, that's probably just the product of the environment I was in. Um, mm -hmm. obviously I, you know, we had, we had two and we have two NBA guys right now that, that were on that team. And at one point, my, you know, my junior year when I played varsity, we had, I'm pretty sure nine kids ended up playing college basketball on one team, um, which included four D1s. Um, and then obviously the NBA guys we have in there now. Um, but the, the passion that people have for basketball that don't even really play it, um, it it's contagious. And it, and it, you know, I still, whenever I need a little kick, um, up here I think about you know the people back there and and just you know the people that that would be at the games watching that that would give me support and kind of kind of believe in me that didn't even know me um and you know being in that environment was awesome and I I I'm probably you know New Paltz is great but it's definitely not that I'll tell you that <laughs> I was about to I wanted to go into that being that like you went to such a crazy cultured high school and with such a competitive atmosphere, what, how was the transition from that to New Paltz? I mean, how were you able to handle it and stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, the physical aspect of the game, it's always going to change when you get to college. You know, even, even the best guys on our team, uh, you know, struggle a little bit um, physically, um, mm -hmm. you know, because you're playing with men now. And, 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 and that was kind of a transition, uh, a struggle for me um, when I got here. Um, I was originally just a 
uh, three point shooter in high school. I was a role player. Um, and the fact that I played a role was intriguing to a lot of college coaches. Um, because I could kind of just fit right into a system because I already kind of played in a high level system. Um, but when I got here, the, the original coach who recruited me, uh, who's not here anymore, wanted me to be a point guard. Um, so having to kind of switch from being a role player to, to maybe having the ball in my hands a little bit, I struggled with. Yeah. Um, but the mental side of it, I, I was, I felt like I, and I still feel like I know so much from being in that environment. The, the, my basketball IQ was a lot higher than I think some of my peers coming in. Um, just, just the knowledge that I would get from some of these other guys around me. I mean, you know, obviously, for those who don't know, it, I played with Cole Anthony in high school and, and guys like his dad, uh, Greg Anthony, who played for the Knicks, would be around. And, you know, college coaches like Chris Mullen and um, Bill Self. Um, some assistant coaches from Duke would be in the gym sometimes and you have conversations with these people and, and the basketball that they talk about, it's like, a, it was like a whole nother world. And, you know, I still, I still don't feel that world here at New Paltz, obviously, you know, being a division three, it's a lot different from those powerhouse programs, but I took kind of all the knowledge I got from them and I use it every day here. Yeah. I mean that, the fact that, you were able to grow up in an environment like that where you had the opportunity to just learn from these great minds is, is really awesome. And I know people uh, don't take advantage of it at the most sometimes, I don't think. So mm -hmm. the fact that you're here with such an IQ and like this passion is really awesome that you're involved in the program. But mm -hmm. I know you talked about it a little bit, but maybe was you would consider the transition easier, harder than, than most? Uh. I'd say, I, I'd say it was hard. Um, I had to physically get myself ready to play. Um, yeah. I, uh, and, you know, playing against men, you know, being you know 18 year old in, in a contact sport. I mean, basketball isn't always looked at as a contact sport, but it is physical. Um, and so I struggled a little bit in that sense. Um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't anything too crazy. I think a lot of the yeah. mental stuff that I got from from high school helped me out a lot. Yeah, I know we just dove into that too. But to just kind of, I mean, do you have any advice or tips for people to looking to play college basketball and like make that that transition? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess the one thing I wish that I took more seriously when I came in is. Uh, the physical aspect of the game, obviously, as I said before, but more more focused on your mobi mobility. Um, you know, everyone likes to go in the gym and, and start doing bicep curls and, and, and you know, hitting the bench press and all that stuff. But your lower body um, is so, so essential um, mm -hmm. as you start to play higher levels of basketball. Uh, I think Kobe Bryant, um, you know, rest in peace. But yes. one of the best pieces of advice that I think I've ever heard from him was he, he, would, he would show these moves that people would do on the court, you know, professional level. And he would be like, the only reason that guy got that shot off, the only reason he was able to make that move, or the only reason he was able to, to, make, to stay on his feet was because they had strong lower body. Um, and you see the same kind of analysis in boxing. Um, boxers who have weak legs – when they get tired, they go down faster. And so having that lower body base that I've unfortunately only recently got at its peak now, um, if I had had that when I was younger, I might have had a, a, a different kind of career here, unfortunately. But that, I guess that's my best piece of advice. Work on that lower body strength. It's just as important as the upper body. Gotcha. And just also, I think you mentioned it before, and I think it can – like to this topic um just like educating yourself on and just like learning from like the greats and stuff i mean it seems like you're really invested into the game of basketball and, and love learning from like people who have like you know done great things in the sport so for myself in the volleyball community i just love watching like film and stuff and like dissecting the game so i think that's another good piece not like i'm a basketball pro but i always think that can help anybody in every sport yep i agree but but to go into some more fun stuff, 
I wanted to ask you this first. I don't know if anybody has seen, but we do these fun fact segments at the athletic department and mm -hmm. we're struggling to find some fun facts. So do you have any fun facts about yourself or your teammates that you can share that we can uh, maybe do some videos on? Uh, yeah, so uh, I can juggle. Uh, I know okay. people love okay. to watch that. Um, <laughs> I have a magic trick up my sleeve, a one card trick that I use uh, every single time. Uh, trying to think of what else I got. Um, I, th I think that's it for me. I'm trying to not think of some of my teammates. Hmm. I'm honestly trying to think of my teammates who wouldn't want to get on camera so I, c I could get them on camera because I know that would yes. be funny. That's always mm. the best. Yeah, it is. Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I know some of you guys know Isaiah. Isaiah is a pretty good dancer. He likes okay. to dance a lot. Um, but, man, I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know. I don't got anything off the top You're of my head. Draw it up blank. It's all good. But if, if, hey, if something the, comes to me, I'll, I'll stop something the comes up. and I'll make sure. Yes. <laughs> but so I have some superlatives down that I think would be fun to, you know, name that teammate who would do the most likely thing. So we'll go through them all. The first one I got for you is who who's most likely to get dunked on and or dunk on somebody? Okay. So the person that's most likely to get dunked on is 100% Tyreek Frazier. I don't know if anyone knows Tyreek, but but I like to always think that I can dunk on Tyreek, and I still haven't reached that point yet. Um, yeah. But Tyreek, the reason that he, I think he's the most likely to get dunked on is because he's one of the few people I know that will play defense on anybody, um, similar to why I think Patrick Ewing has gotten dunked on a lot in his career. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. by Michael Jordan, I've seen a lot of those highlights, and they're all disappointing to watch. Being a Knicks fan, but that's why yeah. I think that's why I think he would be the person. And then he's all, but he's also the person who's most likely to dunk on somebody. So he's got that. He's going. both. Yep, he is both wow. for me. That's pretty good. All right, next one. Who is most likely to get crossed up or cross up somebody? So the person most likely to cross somebody up is my guy, RJ. Um, he's one of the faster players you'll see at the Division three level. Um, and then person most likely to get crossed up. Uh, it's definitely, I, you know, I was going to say me because <laughs> I've been crossed up a few times in my life. I'm not yeah. I'm never afraid to play defense. And unfortunately, as I said before, when you're not afraid to play defense, you end up on the wrong side of the highlight reel yeah. a lot. Sometimes, um, occasionally. You know, I'll I'll go with me because you know what? Okay. Recently, I've been getting crossed up a little too much for my liking. Hey, so I mean I myself on the spot. Sometimes you got to take it on the chin. I'm glad. You... Respect to that. Respect to you, Jackson. Yes, sir. All right. Who who's most likely to be late to practice? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it's it's not even most likely. It's who has been late to practice. Um. Yeah, I'd love to say Corey Garcia, but he's graduated, so that doesn't count. Corey used to show up. <laughs> Corey used to show up for three thirty practice at three twenty nine with thirty seconds left every single day. They never knew how he did it, but most likely to be late to practice. I'm going to go Jake Passaretti. Uh Jake's been late to the bus a few times, so I'll put him on the spot yeah. there. Um, but he's a funny kid, man. That's awesome. Uh, most likely to forget their shoes. Uh, Dylan Frazier. No, no, no other explanation <laughs> needed. Has it happened before? You was a quick answer. Uh, I just I I live with the kid now this year, and um, I feel like a couple times he's definitely already forgotten his shoes to a workout. So I'll go go with him on that one. Nice. All right. Most likely to hit a game winner. Ooh. Okay. Most likely to hit a game winner. All right, um, this is a tough one because we've had, we have we didn't really have a lot of wins last year, so I have not a lot to go off of. But I'm gonna go with the last person to hit a game winner here, um, and, I, and I'll count him even though he he's not with us anymore. But Scott Riser, uh, shout out to Scott. He hit a game winner against Buffalo State a couple of years ago, um, and we usually do go to someone like him or, uh. So, someone bigger like that at the end of game. So I'll go with Scott, most likely hit a game winner. 
Shout out to Scott. Yes, sir. Um, most athletic. Ooh, most athletic. Okay. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with well. Right now, we we have a a new guy in, new transfer, Justin Powell. I don't know if any of you know him. Um, he's been at school for a couple of years. Shout out Justin here. Um, he's one of the more athletic kids I've seen uh, at Division Three. Um, he used to be a D two player. Um, unfortunately, you guys aren't going to get to see him play this year. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if he's sticking around, but he's uh, he's the most athletic guy on the team right now. I remember, uh, a couple. I think it was our freshman year or sophomore year. Brand, Brandon Guest, that guy. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. He you know out what? The gym. He's been gone for a couple of years now, but that's another person. I know you all maybe had a chance to see him live. Did that dunk but, contest. Um, I was like, wow. Yeah, he um he's one of those people that um it's like it's like he he's just meant to do it. He was meant to jump. Yeah. He just it's just it's 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 you know, he's he's graceful while he's in the air and and all that, all that good stuff. Thank you, Jackson, for being on. I hope you enjoyed. And, yeah, man, thanks for being on. Yeah, had fun. Thank you for having me.